children will go to children's church. Well, um, it is uh, um, that when you have the harlot we were talking about last week and uh, I could only talk about the first point um, of Rahab and uh, I want to take us back there once again and uh, uh, talk more on Rahab um, the, one of the reasons why we are talking about Rahab is because um, we, we noticed that it was the women's month or something like that, and I thought, no, let's just talk about one of the strong uh, women in the Bible. Uh, and Rahab uh, was one that uh, um, came to my uh, thoughts. And uh, uh, it is amazing how God does these things. And uh, at, um, at a certain point, uh, we were having a discussion as the men uh, in the men's uh, meeting and uh, Rahab was mentioned uh, there and that planted a seed in my mind uh, and so Rahab became the woman uh, I wanted to talk about. So in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 31 is where we find Rahab mentioned in the hall of fame of Hebrews and uh, um, I, I want us to look at that verse uh, as our launching verse, uh, we began this last week um, and um, we were talking about the circumstances of her faith. And that was the point of last week, which was the circumstances of her faith. Look at uh, verse 31, it says, By faith Rahab, the prostitute, received the spies in peace and didn't perish with those who disobeyed, and uh, I want to leave it there. But just a, 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 a quick reminder of who Rahab uh, was. Um, Rahab was a, a woman who was in Jericho, uh, most probably a Canaanite woman. Um, she was not a Jew. She was by nature an alien of uh, the commonwealth of Israel and a stranger to the covenants of the Israelites. She is not even a proselyte. Um, a proselyte is someone who converts to Judaism and becomes a Jew even though they were not naturally Jewish. Uh, we call them proselytes. So she just is not even a proselyte. She is a prostitute. That's what she is. Uh, she has made a career and profession out of promiscuity and adultery. This is what she's doing for living. She is a she's a notorious sinner, uh, if you like. This is what she is. And then she appears in God's hall of faith. Okay? Her conversion and her salvation is a type uh, of the calling of the Gentiles. It is a representation, uh, if you like. It is a pledge that God is showing his plans and purposes were not only for a single nation, but it was for many nations. She is a type because uh, it, it casts a shadow of the coming events when the door would be open to anyone who would believe. But it is also the sovereign grace of God that is in display in this passage here. Not only was she a harlot and a prostitute, she's a Canaanite, she's a Gentile who has dedicated her life to sin, and yet grace, the divine choice of God, went after her and overpowered her lust and conquered the life she was living. And the blood of Jesus touched her and enabled her 
to be as clean and as white as snow. She was placed in the family of God. In fact, she appears in that genealogy of Jesus because she got married to Solomon. She is the mother of Boaz, the Redeemer. That's who she is. The circumstances of her faith was the question last week, or if you like, the, com the commencement of her faith. How did she become a believer? How did Rahab, of all people in Jericho, became a believer herself? How did she, all of a sudden, she's a believer and she does wonders there. She saved the people and we looked at uh, passages and scriptures. We looked at uh, uh, so faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God and all that. We demonstrated how Rahab heard the word of God. The, the, the song of Moses was made uh, uh, was fulfilled uh, in her life uh, as well. She believed when others did not believe. She trusted in the God uh, of the Jews. And uh, we saw that last week. I, I do not wish to uh, go back to that. But the point is, you see, Rahab, God went after her specifically. And God did not go after the rest of the people in Jericho. And I demonstrated that by reading in Genesis 15 to show you how the nations there, God had said until the sin of the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Jebusites and the Gigashites and the Midianites have come to me and then I will send you out to go and destroy them because of their sin. For them, it was not a salvation but a judgment. But for Rahab, it was a salvation. And it was the sovereign grace of God that picked her as a prostitute and saved her, even at that time. So I want to move on from um, what we were talking about last week. And uh, because we were talking about um, the circumstances of her faith. I want to talk about today the crop uh, you know I have to rhyme right uh, the crop of her faith so, so the results of her faith the fruit of her faith if you like this is the effect of her faith and, 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 and by the way last week I demonstrated that it was a God given faith uh, that she had um, and this faith is, is, is a faith that comes from God. Um, I quoted verses like Philippians 1.29. It is not only given for us to suffer but to believe. Um, for uh, Ephesians 2.8 and 9. By grace through faith and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God. It is important to realize that we cannot generate faith out of ourselves. It is the Holy Spirit who comes within us and rebirths and gives us that faith. This faith that Rahab has is not a dead faith. This faith produces fruit for the glory of God. The faith of Rahab has actions. It is the faith that is active. It is the faith that works. Uh, uh, let, let me show you. Let me show you. James chapter 2, verse 25. Look at that verse. James 2, 25. It says there in James 2, 25. And in the same way, wasn't Rahab the prostitute also justified by works when she received the messengers 
and send them out by a different route. That is what it says there. James chapter 2, verse 25. This is what demonstrated that she is of the household of faith. It was not going to work just to say I have faith, but nothing to show. It is what she did that demonstrated her faith. This is what we call the crop of her faith. Let me explain it to you further by giving you just at least maybe um, five pointers there. Number one, she welcomed the spies in her home. That's what she did. She welcomed them in her home. She engaged them in a spiritual conversation. She talked about how we know what your God has done. We know, we have heard everything that you've been doing all along. All along. And then number three, she made a provision for their safety. When people began, uh, came and asked, she hid them. Okay? She hid them from danger. And then she was confronted after they had escaped. Uh, the king showed up and said, we heard that they were here. Where are they? She would not betray them, even then. So you see, that is the actions of her faith. This is the result of her faith. This idea of I believe and you don't have works, you can't demonstrate your faith, is a dead faith. Rahab has done something. It was. It, it is actually what James is arguing. James is arguing that Rahab is justified by the works when she received the messengers and even gave them an escape. Now let me clarify my point here. Obviously, we do not believe salvation by works. That is obvious. You cannot work for your salvation. But your work is what proves your salvation. You shall know them by their fruit. Okay? You cannot say you are a believer and then you live like the devil and you expect us to think you are a child of God. No! Your works, the crop of your faith, the fruit of your faith is what will tell us that you are a child of God. And that's what happened with Rahab. The things she did was proof of her faith. And that is why she appears in Hebrews and it says, by faith she did this. By faith she did that. That is the result of faith. Faith that has no works is a dead faith. Faith that has no works is a demonic faith. It is a faith that is likened to that of demons. The Bible says demons also believe and shudder, but they do not produce the works of faith. So we must be those who produce the works of faith. The third thing, not only did we discuss the circumstances of a faith and the crop of a faith, I want us to look at the character of her faith. The character of this faith that we're talking about. It was a singular faith. What do I mean by that? You see, it is easy at times to believe when there is a crowd. It is easy to believe at times when a lot of other people are also saying yes, 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 yes. And, and you're also going along with the mob psychology. She stood on this by herself. The whole nation was not believing and she believed by herself. She stood on her faith alone on it. Against all opposition, when she knew that everybody else is not on the same boat, she stood her ground. She was the only one who repented. 
She did not go with the multitude. She stood alone. She had no one who felt what she did. She felt it all by herself. She was standing on her face by herself. She had no help uh, or encouragement from other believers on the side to uh, spurring her and stirring her faith and encouraging her. She stood by herself. It was a singular faith. But also, not only a singular faith, but a sanctifying faith. Because I don't believe she continued with prostitution after that. She married Salmon. The faith that she had from that point on transformed her life. She got married after that. Also, not only was it um, a singular and sanctifying faith, but it was a self-denying faith. It was a self-denying faith. Why, why, why would I say that? You know how the Bible calls us to deny ourselves and carry the cross and follow Jesus. That self-denial is the one I'm talking about. That one where you do not put yourself above. That self-denial where you will put your life in danger. You see, Rahab was willing to die on that day when she was confronted and interrogated. Where were the spies? She put herself in that position. And she preferred the will of God before her own safety, before her own country, and before her own friends. These people that she grew up with, these customers that she's been servicing, these countrymen that she had, she stood against them at this point at her own peril. Self-denying faith. That's what she did. That is what she did. Not only do we have the character of her faith, but we also have the confession of her faith. In Joshua chapter 2, we read this last week, but uh, it will be fruitful to read it again. In Joshua chapter 2, verse 8 to 11, she confesses um, these things. It says there, Joshua 2, verse 8, before the men fell asleep, she went up on the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that the terror of you has fallen on us and everyone who lives in the land is panicking because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to Sihon and Og, the two Amorite kings, you completely destroyed across the Jordan. When we heard this, we lost heart, we lost heart and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. She confessed that. This is the confession of a faith. You see, faith is not silent. Faith is confessional. Faith says, this is what God says. This is the word of God. This is where I stand. She knew what the Lord will do. She calls uh, God the God of heaven. She says, I know. That's what she says in verse 8. I know what the Lord has done. 
Number five, not only the, compa uh, the, 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 the confession of her faith, but uh, I call this one the compass of her faith. Oh, but if you like, you can use the word, the circumference of her faith. How far and the breadth of her faith. How far was her faith? This is seen uh, in her request to the spies. She's already making prayers. She says to them, right there and then, it says, now please swear, this is in verse 12, now please swear to me by the Lord that you will also show kindness to my family because I showed kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father, mother, brother, sister, and all who belong to them and save us from death. She's already making prayers. She's already thinking of her family and their households. You see, when you have faith like Rahab, you are no longer praying for yourself only. You stretch out your faith to others to touch on others. Extended families, you pray for them. You ask the Lord about them. You become concerned about the well-being of others. You start making prayers and requests on behalf of others. This is the circumference of her faith. It goes wide. Not only does she look at herself, but she goes wide. Oh, how we should have our faith praying for others to be saved. Now there is an issue here. There is an issue here. She lied. You know, they have lied. She, she really lied. She said, this, I don't know what you're talking She lied about the spies. This is the crack. I call it the crack of her faith. You see, in all of us, there is a crack of our faith. None of us have 100% of our faith. None of us live a life of sinlessness. We have those little things that are still part of us, even though we're still people of faith. She was not perfect, just like many of us. She fell in the crack, but God, who is rich in mercy, as pardon, and I find it interesting that in the book of Hebrews and in the book of James they don't talk about her life because God forgives and God forgive us uh, our failures uh, and, and, and this it, it is a blessing that that is not even pointed out that she lied uh, it is she's praised for for this thing. So we, we need to realize that even in our own self, while we walk, we stumble and we fall, but faith does not allow you to stay down. You rise up as a child of God and you walk again because faith won't let you stay down. Uh, lastly, I call this one the commission of her faith. Uh, what did she benefit from it, her faith? Well, surely she did not perish, right? <laughs> That's the benefit, uh, for sure. She did not perish. Uh, in fact, in Joshua chapter 6, when the wall of Jericho fell, is where it's talking about. Uh, she, she got saved her and her family she got saved that that's what she she commissioned out of that she she earned that uh, because the results of the faith uh, produced that nice thing she 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 dwelt in israel uh, and she became a matriarch in israel she appears in the genealogy of jesus in matthew chapter 1 verse 5 she is there she is in the hall of fame of Hall of Faith 
of God. She's there. She's an example of faith. She remains a very strong and powerful example of faith. And that's what she got out of the deed. She benefited mightily because of her faith. Now, child of God, it doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what life has done. It doesn't matter but God. But God. The Bible talks about how we were dead in trespasses and sins. How we walked according to the course of this world. How we lived according to the prince of the power of the year. The spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. The Bible talks about how we, uh, we were by nature children of wrath. The Bible talks about how we walked according to the course of this world. That's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. And then verse 4 says, But God, who is rich in love, and because of his great mercy, he has made us alive to be seated together with Christ in the heavenly places. That is but God. They have the hallowed but God. You can look at many characters but God. God. Have faith in God. She, she believed in God and she trusted in God and man it was a good bed. It produced. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. And everybody else trusted in the wall. Oh, the, the, the people in Jericho, they, were, they had faith in the wall. They knew their wall was tall and high. And uh, the Bible says it went up to the clouds. It was a high wall. They trusted in it. They knew nobody could penetrate the wall. But God. But God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, we behold the character of Rahab and we marvel how the blood of Jesus so powerful is able to go back and make atonement for them that lived under the old covenant and how that blood it is still sufficient and powerful today to cleanse us and wash us and make us white as snow. How that blood that was shed on Calvary's cross is so potent and so powerful to cleanse us and to purify us and make us holy before God. And that we are accepted because of the blood. We are so grateful, O oh God. Grant us grace today as we come to the table to partake of this table. Grant us grace, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. <coughs> amen. <coughs> I want to invite you to the table. Um, <coughs> I want you to realize the grace of God that we have in Christ Jesus because of what Christ has done. Who can participate in this table? Only those who believe in Jesus Christ can participate in this table. Only believers. If you are not a believer, please do not touch the holy things. Do not touch the things 
of God. You will eat and drink judgment to yourself. When we come to the communion table, the bread represents the body of Jesus, the, the wine represents the blood. The bread that he bore in his body, our sins, our trespasses, our iniquities. He carried our sins in his body so that we may be reconciled with God. When we drink the cup that represented the anger of God, this cup was the cup of the anger of God that the Son of God had to drink. The Son of God, not only did he have to suffer and die for our sins but and carry the sin of the world, but he had to absorb the anger and the wrath of God on that cross. And this cup represents that. It's the bread of adversity and the cup of the fury and the anger of God that God has reserved for his enemies. Gave it to his son to drink. And when he finished it, he said, Father, it is finished. And into your hands I lay my spirit. When he finished the cup of the wrath of God. So that you and I will not experience that. We will not be the ones who bear the wrath of of God and the anger and the fury of God because of him he took it all in our place so when we take the blood we remember the blood for the remission of sins for without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins having said that let me read one verse this is Ephesians 1 7 we have redemption in him through his blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. We have redemption because of his blood. The forgiveness of our sins according to the riches of his grace. Amen. On that night, the Lord took the bread. He broke it and he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. His body was beaten and bruised. His skin, not bones, his skin was broken. For our sins and for our transgressions. Let us bless the bread. Our gracious God, marvelous, glorious, majestic, wonderful. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, to the Lamb of God who was slain. We thank you, Father, for the bread. We thank you, Lord, for the provision for the lamb was provided. As we commemorate and remember the crucifixion, Father, as we partake of this bread, bless the bread, sanctify it to our bodies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Bravik, will you please distribute the bread for us?
Sanctify it completely. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Mr. Smith.
Our Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your blessing and the fellowship on your table. We thank you, Father, for the gift of life, health, and favor that only you can give. We thank you for these things. Bless, O oh God, your children and grant them grace today. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Um, let me close for us in this benediction. I pray that the Lord may grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power in the inner man through his spirit and that the Messiah may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that you being rooted and firmly established in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and width and height and depth of God's love and to know the Messiah's love that surpasses all knowledge so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do above beyond all we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen.